glad you could join us today. I'm Scott with Lynch Creek Long Hunters, uh, putting together a video uh, that's going to incorporate uh, two time period of uh, the primitive skill sets that we want to work on and also some more modern stuff of bushcraft work. And so today I've got a couple gentlemen with me that we're going to work on these skill sets and, and uh, we'd like to bring you along and let you see what we're putting together and uh, just enjoy the video. Hi there, I'm Steve Cole and we're getting ready to start on the primitive skills on how to make the fire. Howdy, I'm Pasha here for Manual Leaper. All right, what we got here right now, uh, have a laid out an assortment of strikers, several different kinds and types and styles. We got from the most, one of the more unusual is we can strike on the back of a knife. We got far more historic style, nice oval. We have a more, if I remember correctly, these were New Mexican style. Uh, some typical old busted files. If you've ever seen the Revenant, you'll see the Striker Fork. A few other ones, these three were built by that same fellow Paul. This nice mustache one has a little divot in it so you can use it when you're doing bow drill. All right, another broken file here. We have different types of flints, different varieties. I believe that, uh, that's not flint, that's an agate, I believe. I'm not sure on this one. Other types, I think also an agate, flint, flint, flint. This kind of flint right here is basically what you would have seen on an old musket. So in my slightly more historical kit, that's why I could put that one there. And you can see I got some sulfur matches, some of the chaga, the char, another material. Over here, I believe this is some teased jute. You see some char, you see a bunch of the cattail. In this coffin box, which is one of the ones I had made, you got your char, you got a bunch of innards from gourd. Nice, soft, fluffy gourd inners work well. You have a dampener. Like if you saw what I was doing with the sulfur matches, the historical style to do that is you spark into your tinder box, and when that lights, you use your sulfur match, you blow onto the, onto the ember. Once this lights up, you take your dampener and you put it back in there, and it snuffs that back out. Then you can put your tinder box away. Not all of them, obviously, were in this shape. There's a lot of wood ones, round ones, different shapes, stuff like that. And this one I also keep a bunch of the little, my tease material, but rather than having a large giant fluff like this, I twist it up just like that. It makes it a little more handy to keep in your kit. And you can do this one, get that one, twist one way, twist back, twist one way, twist back, one way, twist back, one way, twist back back and forth and it's a nice way to keep it nice and clean similar to what they would have done with old tobacco twists all right and what we've got here is a birch bark basically this is what we would call a candle so once you got your fire going or whatever you take this light the end of it and you've got fire for a short amount of time all right now if you want we can do a quick demo of the striking actually I will show you something else real quick I will show you what a regular striker would look like and see you've seen some of these if you already watched the earlier parts of this video and you see sparks real nice this one came from a blue anvil forge down in Oregon nice guy you saw a spark that well that sparked and this one obviously with a knife you're not going to be swinging around because you cut yourself up you can do something like holding it into the tinder what you do with this one is you strike down onto it. But you see how much more difficult it is to get a good spark. Barely getting any, I'm getting some, but not a lot. All right. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to make the charred material. There is a few different ways, but the nice easy way is you take some clean cotton or natural fabric material, 
tear it up, you put it into a metal container. And you can see right here, I punched a hole in the side that lines up when I close it. So the smoke will be coming out of there. And if I want to seal it, you can turn it this way to, to keep it, keep the moisture out later on. All right, what we're gonna do is basically take this material, throw it in our fire, woo, and we're gonna let it burn. What we're doing is we're basically turning the charred material, we're turning the fabric into a type of charcoal. It's gonna burn without oxygen, so it's gonna burn everything else off, and when it's done, it'll look just like that. Using the charred material, it takes a spark much, much easier than say non-charred material. If you want a quick example, I could take another striker I got here. And this right here is just cattail fluff. You can take that. And this is another striker from Paul. There are some funguses like this right here that don't need charring and they will still strike up well too. Let me get a little smaller setup here. You can see the old file, an old arrowhead. This is what they refer to as chaga. You can see, I already caught that spark. No processing needed, just needs to be light and fluffy. And there it goes. All right, we're starting to get some smoke out from this one. All right, you can notice right over here. That's the material inside burning off. When the smoke completely stops, everything inside is gonna be charred. If you want to kick it out of the fire, get a good sharp edge here. There we go. You're just gonna throw it in there. All right, so we got a whole bunch in there now. And it was nice as sulfur. Ow. Ow. <laughs> ah, whole tin's on fire. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll be Okay, and now, now we're ready for the, the second way in which you can make fire with uh, a primitive method. Uh, it's actually a tobacco tin, but uh, I use it as a tinder box. And what you do is you have a magnifying glass. I have the char cloth right in there so that I'm not actually holding it. And then you just, just like you're trying to burn an ant, you make a really, really fine point. And it doesn't take long at all before you get it glowing. Give it a little blow. Get yeah. a blow on that just a little bit so we can see. There you go. Oh yeah, there we oh, go. Oh yeah, that was that was definitely uh, warming my hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're like, why is this? <laughs> yeah, why is it getting so hot if it's not lit? Okay, and look at that, and look at that. And then we'll take this back over here. And sometimes you can actually just hold it and let the wind do it which is kind of cool. Sometimes you gotta help it. Yeah. 
pan down. Uh, you got the shavings, all that cool stuff. Get started. And some other pieces. And once they start, it's just a matter of maintaining it. Yeah. Okay. You, you want that? You want to oh, okay. I was going to say, that's two different methods you can use that are both period correct. And both require a little bit of patience and a whole lot of practice. Okay, that concludes our primitive skill set on fire starting. Uh, the next fire starting skill set will be for the modern. So 